Hey guys, I'm Mike and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Right now you're going to watch one of our oldies videos made a few years ago. Now it has horrible quality video production, but amazing quality educational content. So before we get today's video started, I just wanted to let you know on some exciting new stuff that we're doing to totally remaster all of our 1200 videos here at SimpleNursing.com. So no more erasing the whiteboard with a sock. We're going to have videos that look just like this. Fibrillation fireworks is the best way to remember V-fib, the most deadly rhythm of all time. One of only two rhythms that you actually defibrillate or shock. Now the other one is pulseless v tack So what is V-fib? Well, ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which electrical impulses arise from many different foci. All right, guys, so don't forget to do two things. First of all, subscribe right here to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any new videos coming out. And secondly, guys, try our free demo to our new quiz bank and over 1,200 videos not here on YouTube. So guys, click right up there. I'll leave the link up there for the rest of this video for you to do. So without any further ado, don't be scared, be prepared. Let's roll that oldies video. So anticholinergic bronchodilators. All that really means, guys, is that we're turning off the system that causes fight and flight. So let me break it down to you this way. You have two systems at work here. You have a sympathetic nervous system which is called fight and flight. And you also have a parasympathetic nervous system, which is called rest and digest. All this really means is where is your blood going? Is your blood going to the fight and flight organs, which is your heart and your lungs and also your brain? Or is your blood going to your GI tract and your kidneys in terms of your pee pee, right? And also your muscles or your um, the rest of the other organs. So, you want to think of it like this here. So you have a little teeter totter here, okay? So you have a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic. Your fight and flight mode and your rest and digest mode here. Okay? So, for the fight and flight mode, these are called sympathomimetics. For your parasympathetics, we have, they're called parasympathomimetics. So, as we said before, your sympathomimetics, your fight and flight, that's going to shunt blood uh, to the heart, to the lungs, to the brain, is your epinephrine and your ephedrine, just adrenaline, right? The cool thing is that if we shut off your parasympathetic nervous system, what's called your anticholinergics, so let's see, how about we do this here just to help you remember this better. And, or is it, let's say cholinergics. There's so many different names for the same thing here. Okay. And there is a anticholinergic. Cool. So, so many different things for the same, so many names for the same thing. Okay, so cholinergic, cholinergic just means that you're producing saliva, you're producing digestive enzymes, you're actually urinating. So if you have an anticholinergic, it means you're not urinating, you're not digesting, you're not um, peeing, what my uh, instructor used to say is cholinergic means that you're peeing, you can see, uh, she called it the three S's, or um, what you call it? Can't see, can't, oh yeah, the three S's. 
uh, see, spit, and, you know, poop, okay? So she used to say that all the time. In that if you have a cholinergic agent, you're going to be able to see fine because of all that fluid um, that's able to um, moisturize the eyes. You're going to be able to pee fine, and you're going to be able to sh you know, poop fine because your rest and digest tract is in order. It's good. For anticholinergics, you can't see, you can't spit, and you can't, sh you know, go to the bathroom. So, um, anticholinergics, not digestive type of deals here. We're not producing any salivatory um, things to help us digest. We're not producing any, um, any uh, what is it called, any digestive enzymes here. If we give an anticholinergic, like let's say atropine, we're going to increase the heart rate. We're going to increase the lungs. We're going to increase that perfusion to these organs. If we're giving a cholinergic agent, we're going to increase digestive tract. We're going to increase urination, increase saliva being produced in the mouth. Does that make sense a little bit? So, if we turn one off, the other one's turned on. If we turn the other off, this guy's turned on. Cool? So, just remember, cholinergic, you're going to see, you're going to spit, and you're going to go pee-pee, and you're also going to go poo-poo. You're going to go bathroom. Okay? So, <laughs> for your anticholinergics, you can't see, can't spit, can't take a, you know, go to the bathroom because the blood is right here. It's not in here. It's right here. We're only concerned about fighting and flighting. We're not concerned about resting and digesting. So these are the main differences, guys. So let's get into anticholinergic um, type of drugs for your respiratory tract. That's going to bring more perfusion to the respiratory tract. Do it. All right, guys, thanks for watching only one part in our full video here at SimpleNursing.com. If you guys click the link right here, you can get access to our full course as well as our new quiz bank, which is really nifty. And also guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here for all of our new videos coming out here on YouTube first before they go into our video vault right up there at simplenursing.com.